The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Schaus and we are joined today with Anna Ehrman who is Principal and CEO of Tactical Insight. Our topic today in our webinar series is all about the debrief. So what we're going to do today is uh, enter a quick agenda. We'll provide some introductions to our partners, Pierce Government and Ted Bitspeed, as well as uh, a little bit of information about Anna's company, Tactical Insight. We'll then run through the presentation. And as you have, as you have questions, please uh, go ahead and type them in on the right-hand side of your screen. There should be a, a box that says questions. You can type that in, and we'll address those all at the end. Uh, as I mentioned, our partners, uh, Fed Bid Speed, they are a software company that helps you manage your opportunities that you find on FedBiz Ops. So as you find an RFP or RFQ that you want to respond to, their software program allows you to download the solicitation and assign different people within your company either to project manage the, uh, the opportunity, someone to become, say, the proposal writer, and various other tasks. Um, so we encourage you to take a look at their site. And I believe that they're still offering maybe a, a 10 or 20 day uh, trial period to, to kind of take a their software for a test run. The website is fedbidspeed.com. Uh, our other partner that helps in promoting our government series webinars is Fierce Government. They're a Washington, D.C.-based firm and primarily providing content about uh, government IT news, so anything related to the cloud or cybersecurity and those sort of things. They've also got great content, uh, various white papers, uh, different analysis that their experts provide. And as far as the information they provide, if you look at some of the other companies out there that are providing newsletters or data um, in this sector, I would say that Fierce Government is certainly at the, uh, the top of the list. Uh, next is Tactical Insight. And Anna Ehrman is the CEO and president of the company, uh, Virginia-based firm. and. Basically, I would say, and Anna, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, you guys are focused primarily on data. So if you're interested in selling into the government market and as your go-to person, she can help you understand which agencies are going to be optimal for you to sell into based on your industry codes, your company size, and any other designations that you may have, such as, say, woman-owned, veteran-owned, uh, or minority-owned. She can also help with a competitive or SWOT analysis to let you know who else is out there uh, as far as competitors and what sort of advantages you may have over them or perhaps disadvantages. Uh, moving on, my company is based here in Washington, D.C. Our primary focus is on helping government contractors with GSA schedules, so getting onto the schedule, maintaining it, assisting with audits, renewals, modifications, and really every component of the schedule. Additionally, we've got partners um, such as Anna's firm and others that help with federal sales and marketing. And I've got the, uh, the website listed there where we list all of the webinars, including the, uh, the past ones that we've completed and the recordings. Uh, we'll probably be putting a June schedule up in the next uh, couple of days, so stay tuned for that. OK, we'll now move on to the, uh, the presentation, which is why we're all here today. And we're going to talk about uh, the debrief. Uh, there's really four components that we'll run through, uh, which we've got listed there. What is it? Who can use it? How and why you want to consider using the debrief? And really, at what point or kind of the timing piece of it as well? And Anna, I will, uh, I'll pass it over to you now. Uh, so first of all, what is a debrief? Uh, a debrief is. Um, a presentation or uh, a briefing that a government agency conducts with vendors after um, after they have awarded a contract. Uh, it is first and foremost an opportunity for you to get some constructive criticism and hear from the contracting officer and your source selection authority about why they made the decision that they did. It's a, a chance for, for them to tell you how you did, what they were looking for, and what the successful proposal 
whether it was yours or not, or what the successful proposal was able to convey to them and present a solution. The meetings are done after the award, usually at the contractor's office, uh, at the government office. Sometimes they will do off-site. Uh, it is, in, it is to your benefit to have it done at the government's office because you have an opportunity. There's more chance that more of them will show up. So it will be both the, uh, the, um, the source selection authority, whoever was chairing that committee, as well as their technical representatives. If you're trying to schedule off-sites, the chances that all of them will come to you are uh, greatly diminished. Uh, you, we strongly advise you to get debriefs whether you lost or won. Uh, there's always something that you could learn uh, about their thinking. There's uh, questions you could ask about your proposal, what you did well, what were the selling points, uh, or what you did not do so well. And we'll talk about uh, the specific questions to ask in just a couple of slides. Uh, but take the opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one meeting or one-on-many meeting with your customer to find out what they really thought of your presentation and your packaging. We will talk about some pros and cons, some things that you absolutely need to discuss, some things that you should not talk about in the debrief, or some questions you don't want to ask your customer to not put them into an awkward place or to, um, to make them choose between the truth and the law. Uh, the formal debriefing rules, what the government is and is not allowed to disclose, uh, is under FAR 15.505 um, and FAR 15.506. So you could read through them, but we'll talk about the major points throughout this presentation. Great. Uh, and as we alluded to in the last slide, who can use the debrief? Um, I think a lot of times companies are under the impression that it's only for the losing bidder. But uh, as part of your strategy, you may want to consider uh, if you have been fortunate enough to win uh, the bid to really find out what it was uh, in your proposal, uh, whether it was primarily price or your past performance uh, stuck out, and understand why, uh, why you won that bid so that you can then replicate that success in the future. Uh, moving on, uh, why to use it. Um, it's a great way to uh, build or build upon an existing relationship with a contracting officer or a particular agency. Um, the debrief is typically not a hostile uh, meeting and should not be entered into as such. So you really want to go with the intent that you're going to come away from this with uh, actionable information and, and data that you can then use in the future to propel your strategy. So uh, it's a great way, um, as we said, just to, to shake the hands, to get to know the people, and have a, a conversation with them, uh, build a little bit of rapport, and understand really uh, kind of what your next move should be. And it gives you some insight into the agency as far as how they think, what they're looking for, uh, they have a certain propensity for uh, certain types of contractors, um, and really kind of maybe what some additional opportunities are in the future. Uh, anything you wanted to add there, Anna? No, uh, I think I, th I think you you covered it. Uh, the 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 underline there is you need to ask uh, intelligent questions and listen for. Listen for what they're not saying as well as for what they're saying. You'll get a good idea of um, of what their your customer really wants and what they were looking for and what their plans are in the general picture. Okay, uh, so a little bit more specific with your questioning. Uh, you can be strategic here and, and obviously find out what worked and what didn't. Make sure you've got your questions prepared in advance. That this is just not an off the cuff casual meeting, you are taking time uh, out of their day, and these folks are, are fairly busy. Um, so make sure that you're, you're being very specific uh, as well as strategic and understanding uh, any evaluation factors perhaps that were not specified in the RFP, and, and be sure to ask that question. Um, Emma, anything else that uh, you wanted to add here? Um, actually, yeah, and this, right before we get to the questioning, uh, it's important for you to know that it, it's not, 
you're not just going into the room and you'll be firing off questions. A debrief is a formal presentation by the Source Selection Authority. So they have slides prepared. They will cover some of the materials. They will provide some of the explanations. And then there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions and get to know them and, and have a real conversation with them. So you will hear from them first. And then uh, you need to ask the questions that will help you uh, improve and take it in and do better next time. Uh, and again, as we continue on on uh, how to use the uh, questioning, um, obviously we'll, they will go through the, the contract and debriefing file. Um, and you can correct any errors uh, or anything that maybe you did not submit in your proposal and leverage anything that you did do uh, correctly. And it is a, it is a conversation, as we've mentioned uh, over and over. So it, it is smart to go ahead and ask about any upcoming opportunities that may or may not be similar in nature that your company may have the capabilities for. Anna? Um, on that first point on the slide, uh, any dissenting evaluations, you want to be, do ask that question, but you want to be very careful with it. If there's dissent and they, they refer to it or they admit it, you will know who your champions are and who may not be. It could also be grounds for protest if they did not make a unanimous decision. There's some wiggle room to see maybe their decision. Um, could be swayed or could be based on factors that are um, fudgeable. So what not to do, right? Not, <laughs> excuse me, it's not a good idea. Think about your long-term strategy. Even if you won this contract, you want to be careful, but even if you didn't, this might be a customer you want to come back to again and again. You don't want to be argumentative. You don't want to be combative with them because they will find additional grounds to uh, to not award you future contracts if you're difficult to deal with. Uh, the other thing that I don't recommend you doing is have uh, you know if there's a pause, if there's a lunch break, or uh, you know a 15-minute bio break, uh, don't corner them at the water cooler and ask them questions you've asked and have been answered again. Don't try to engage them in informal conversations because um, it puts them in an awkward place. They can't really address that because one person, one government person chairs the meeting and questions need to be addressed through them to the entire panel. Anything taken offline um, is, is really, you're kind of, you're kind of cornering them. And if, if, uh, if they don't answer the same way or if, if it's anything other than they have in writing or other than that is an official answer. Uh, not only can they not back it up, but it might be, uh, they might be giving you grounds for, uh, for adverse action that they don't, that they don't want to do. Uh, you cannot address or, or cannot ask questions about the RFP itself at that point. Uh, if something was worded incorrectly or you weren't sure about how to reply to a particular point in the RFP, the time to protest the RFP has passed once um, uh, once the um, responses were submitted. There was, uh, for every RFP, there's an open question and answer period, uh, and there was an appropriate time to protest the RFP itself. This is only having to do with the proposals or with the responses to an RFP. Um, and whereas you can ask questions about the winners, the winning proposal strengths, you cannot ask about any other proposals. What did the other losing bidders do? Or how did you do against them? Or what were some common themes in other proposals that didn't win? The only thing you could ask about is your own proposal and or the winning proposal. Jennifer, uh, would you say do a debrief every time? Uh, as far as when to use the debrief and frequency, um, depending upon the size of your company and, and also the size of the opportunity that you're bidding on, um, if, if you have not won and it's a sizable 
uh, RFP and you really thought that you met every single of the requirements and as well as perhaps exceeded some of the qualifications that the government was looking for. You really came away scratching your head thinking you had this one in the bag. Um, that's the time when I would use the debrief. Um, I guess some companies are maybe being a little bit aggressive now that they're having a hard time getting in to, to meet the government uh, buyers and program managers and they're not finding them at the trade shows or the conferences. So maybe as a strategy they're submitting proposals and if they haven't won then just using the debrief as a way to, to get in and build a relationship. I'm not sure if that's ideal, but um, but you should, you know, be making good use of your time. And if you do feel that the information that you're going to obtain from that meeting is going to help you in the future, then uh, then it can be worth your while. And if it if it's a customer that you really care about, if it's your target agency, if that's your ideal customer, take every opportunity to meet with them, understand their needs. It'll help you not only understand what happened when they awarded this particular contract 10 days ago, but what do they want overall? It'll give you um, the intel to, to, build a, to build a case and for future opportunities with that particular company. Right. And also the converse, uh, if you end up winning a bid and you didn't think that you had that great of a chance, um, it's very smart to sit down and understand why you were selected. Maybe your price was 20% uh, lower than uh, than everyone else that, that bid, and so um, maybe you know that up front um, because you, you really did low ball it with, uh, with pricing, but, um, but it's also smart to understand why you were selected. Anything else you want to add there? Uh, just on the last point on that slide, um, you have 10 days from the award or from um, the, la the receipt, I'm reading, uh, I'm just going to quote here from the law, um, a protest challenging the award of a contract must be filed within 10 days of when a protester knows or should know the basis of protest. So it could be 10 days from the award or if you need a debrief, it could be 10 days from the debrief. If your government, um, if the government at the debrief promises to provide you more information in writing or some follow-up, it's 10 days from whenever you receive that information. But it's 10 calendar days. If you do a debrief Friday afternoon and you go out, go away for a long summer weekend, you just wasted three days. So be very careful if you plan on protesting. Keep those um, timelines tight. And now we'll move on to some conclusions uh, about the debrief. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, think of it broadly. You are in front of a potential customer that you have invested your time, your money, your resources to put a proposal in front of. You want to make sure you're getting the most out of that proposal, obviously winning the work and, and being with that customer for the next three to five years is great. But think of um, FaceTime with them, learning about their organization and their needs as, uh, as another opportunity to, to grow your business. Don't um, be prepared for what they will say and be prepared with smart questions to ask them and uh, take advantage of this to learn about yourself. Ask them not only about the facts or your technical approach. But it's okay to ask them about the format, if they, uh, if they like how you put it together, if something that you tried out, if it was a new marketing tool or something like that, if that was acceptable. So uh, feel free to, to use that time to make your business better and to make your next proposal that much more successful. Great. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions? Uh, Yep, we've got some, uh, some questions coming in here. Um, our next slide has uh, both Anna's contact information as well as mine, um, which I can move on to. OK. Um, so the first question reads, uh, you said the debrief is a marketing opportunity. Can you please explain this further? 
Um, well, I, one thing I'll say is you're, you're going in front of a customer. Whether if you won the award, they're your current customer. If you lost, it's a potential future customer. You want to make sure that you are well put together, you ask intelligent questions, you bring bring capability statement, you interface with them and, and you make a good impression every time. Because you never know when they they might need your services again. Great. Well put. Uh, is the federal government required to provide a debrief to all losing bidders? Uh, they are not required. However, in recent years, protests have become more and more and more common. So in the government's case, not only is it a good business uh, practice to give feedback, uh, because if you're soliciting something, the larger the program, uh, the more responses you get, and you, um, and you want to make sure that the industry understands what you're asking for. But they also want to prevent protests because they're lengthy and they're expensive and they land the government on the front page of the Washington Post. So they will do a debrief, they will try to diffuse the situation, explain to you why they uh, came up with a decision that they did so that they, um, they don't spend as much time in court. Great. Uh, how do I ask for a debrief? Is there specific paperwork or forms that I need to complete? Jennifer, do you want to take that? Or sure. Uh, go ahead. Um, you ask them in um, in the same format as the communication that you've had with them before. So if if they communicate by email, um, that's how you ask for a debrief. It's generally you don't want to call them up and ask for it. You want to make sure that it's uh, it's recorded, it's a, it's a document, it's ha you have proof of it. So um, have it in writing. Email is faster and easier. If they require it to be in, uh, you know, by, by mail, which is less and less of a requirement, then you do what the government is asking you to do. Exactly. I would also add with your documentation, just make sure that you keep track and that you've got it uh, documented well as far as the timelines and the associated dates with that, uh, so that you Very don't good. lose track of that. Yep. Uh, next question reads, how much does this cost? Um, there is no cost associated with the debrief except your time and, and their time, so make sure that you use it wisely. Anything you want to add there, Anna? Not at all. Uh, if my company is going to file a bid protest, should we first pursue the debrief? Yes, because you need to understand what, um, what the government, or in this case, what the, um, the opposing party is thinking. The more information you have up front, the easier it is for you to make your case. Or in the event that they have good grounds, or um, it's a way for you to maybe save some money. If, if they have good arguments for why you did not get selected, you'll find out before you pay the lawyers. Correct. Well said. Uh, and it looks like that may be it for questions. Uh, the webinar, as they all are in the past, uh, they are all recorded. We'll have the recording and the slides available to you uh, probably later this evening, and they'll be posted on the uh, on the website where you want to register, which was the uh, jennifershouse5.eventbrite.com. Uh, again, a special thanks to Ted Bidspeed and Fierce Government, as well as Anna Ehrman for her always intelligent insight. And Anna, any last um, thoughts or, or comments? Um, I, I think we've covered it. Uh, if you have okay. any questions, please send them to Jennifer and myself. And thank you, Jennifer, for hosting us again. Great. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you.